Hello, everybody, and welcome to Paranormal Nation Radio, Not So Normal. How's Denise and Ron tonight? We're doing great. We had a good weekend and, we know and, and a rainy day. One another three-day weekend. <laughs> yeah. Hey, are you at the new place? This yep. right here? Yeah. Not yet. But no, these are, say, this is a picture... At? This is a picture from inside the building. Oh, okay. Looking at the front door. I thought I'd put it up. We got several pictures of it and everything, but uh, yeah, it's coming down to the wire. We're getting it. So well, we good. will see. Can't wait to see see it inside. And Oh, I know. Look at the brick wall over here. It's pretty. That shelf up there. Goes mm -hmm. the full length of this wall and has antiques up there. <clears throat> that came with the building? All this you see in Left here. Left everything, didn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, the pictures I have on here that show you, <clears throat> there's probably eighty to $90,000 worth of equipment and everything in the business. Right now, this this building right here, if you didn't have to do a little bit of work in there, Put uh, two big, uh, two deep briars in it, mm -hmm. stock it, and you're ready to go. Hmm. Everything's there. All the plates, the silverware, the glasses, um, the equipment in the kitchen, everything like that. But we got a little wow. bit of work to do. Uh, got to do some work on this ceiling up here. Mm -hmm. That It looks fancy, but it's that plastic crap. Yeah. Well, yeah. the good news is, is I mean, it's a... It's. It looks like a good brand. It looks like she can make a brand out of this. Right, right. So that's something to, to go with. I mean, and she doesn't have to go far with it. No, the upstairs is even, which the staircase, right? right. That's one like side said, going up. Classy and they'll be having it, weddings there by August. Yeah, we've already got two people want to book receptions for weddings when we get it opened up upstairs the whole thing there is getting the deal with the people that you need to get the deals with you know, right like linen people and all the other stuff so you yeah. know you guys will figure it out there's a lot of things going on they just built a castle down the street um for wedding venues here in lewisburg mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i just never dreamt that people would want i mean we don't even have any hotels here we have one bed and breakfast now though in right. the old um uh mason's hall used yeah. to be a movie theater and then it became a mason's hall and a funeral home so needless to say it's going to be interesting to hear what they have to say right but i mean so, this this building up here like I said it on the front of the building it shows it was built in uh, uh 1905 this stuff i'm trying to pull something up here and i'll show you something okay Let's see if I can do it this way real quick. We just go through a couple of pictures that I wanted to show you. Okay, get up there. Where you at? Oh, wrong button. Okay. There's my voice coming through again. But there's one picture inside. That looks nice. Yeah, you see up at the top. Uh, above Shay's place right there mm -hmm. that's the actual big dumb waiter in there that's an eight foot by eight foot dumb waiter well see. at least it's not a dumb waiter so you're good there's another side of the staircase oh that's pretty mm -hmm. there's downstairs again one of the bathrooms behind the counter but look at that that brick wall I just love it yeah yeah the Very way rustic. It is. Yeah. Okay. Where's the upstairs? Come on. Oh, okay. Of course, there's the outside of the building. Mm hmm And stuff. Hey, Gary. There's inside. Dad, Jeremy, Ross. Here's, now, here's part of the upstairs. Is that a brick wall back there, too? Yes. Oh, that's nice. Up there. Brick wall upstairs is on both sides. You'll see here in a second. There's upstairs. Now, wow. Right there in the middle of all those 
eight by eight beams there is that eight foot dumbwaiter elevator right wow. back there in the uh, middle. She got a hell of a deal on yeah. all this. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at the uh, staircase in the uh, spindles. I can't wait to come in there and check out and see if it truly, if it's haunted. Right. Well, folks, see where everybody listening out there where it says Davies County Land and Title. Okay. That building was there way before this other part of the building was there. You can see, a, you can see a line and, right. uh, and the windows but are different. That Susan was a bank. I that was a Ooh. bank. That's the bank that Jesse and Frank James robbed and killed the guy in in Gallatin, Missouri. Right next to it? Or? Right right next to it. Oh, right wow. connected to it. Yeah, yeah. See, see the little lot. There's the lot that goes with us. We're going to grab all that for parking. Uh, the outside, got to do some work out there, but no big deal, but... I wanted to get in. There's the big ice maker. Like I said, this thing is set up in there with everything. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Wow, I, that's, that's... I think that, uh, like I said, she's got a brand going there. Shouldn't have to do much, but put her name on it now. Yeah, that's what the plan is. So Gary, Gary said there's lots of space for spirits. So <laughs> Yeah, there is upstairs. <laughs> so um tonight we have a couple guests right now we only have one i brought in uh cheryl ann elliott fletcher she's coming back to visit with us um if you guys recall the last time she was here she had uh technical difficulties and she was cooking dinner so we're bringing her back so you guys can actually talk to her a little bit more before her phone dies <laughs> <laughs> no it's fine it's actually it's okay now <laughs> right so um I, I asked her to come back so that you guys could uh, actually ask your questions and, and get to know her a little bit. And later on, we may have a second guest come on. And when we do, I will introduce him at that time. But right now, we're going to visit with Cheryl Ann. So, so Cheryl Ann, what's been going on for you paranormally? Well, a lot of wacky stuff. Um, actually, uh, the house, I live in an L shape, a duplex, and... Uh, the other part of the duplex, you guys, is uh, we've had some issues over there. It's kind of crazy how uh, this all kind of happened. Um, you know, uh, I said we had attachments over there next door, and that's Grandma Betty's. That would be Mark, my ex's um, mom, lives there. And this, this has been going on a while. Um, it started really kind of like, uh, kind of crazy, like, First, Mark ended up, Mark being my ex, ended up with throat cancer. And then after that happened, I found I had nose cancer on my nose. <clears throat> and then after that, hold on, this is crazy. And after that, um, she falls in the tub and gets a bilateral brain bleed and ends up in the hospital having to have both drained and was there a couple of months. In the, or I mean a couple of weeks. And then um, my son ends up screwing up his knee and he has to get his meniscus fixed and his ACLS or whatever that's called. And so yeah. it's just, yeah. ACLS is something totally different. But. Know, but, <laughs> and well, or whatever it's called in the knee, I never get it right. And everybody that knows me well, they laugh every time because I never, ever think about it, you know, uh, like the actual name of it. And I screw it up every time. I don't care. I do. So this is crazy how this is all went. But before all these incidences happened, we were having activity next door. And, you know, as I have had time to really think about it after cleansing when she was in the hospital, you know, something was obviously attached to us. I have a really close friend. Her name is Diana. And she kept telling me, Cheryl, you need to pray. You need to you know, do some cleansing over there and cleanse in your house too and pray over your son when she lives like 40 miles away. And she was like, because she goes, I just know when I walk into your house, there's just something not right. And I said, yeah, you know, it would make sense because when I get something attached to me, I know something's off. That's how I can tell. I know I'm off and that's it. I can't tell to you, oh, I have so-and-so on my backside. 
This ain't for me. It's for everybody else. So when I have something going on with me, I get to sit there and get in bear it and try to figure it out until somebody else can see it and say, you got something on you. So the point here I make is that I went and cleansed the property and we all prayed over us and family and it's been pretty quiet. Everybody's healthy. Everything's doing pretty good. And this thing on my back is getting better. And, and it's just, that's what I've been talking about paranormal wise. It's just been, it's been obvious that something wasn't right. And it all came from Betty's house right next door. And, and I'm telling you, it's an L shape duplex. And she's just like right there. I mean, like right through this wall. And so she's over there. And I knew it was coming from over there. Every time I'd walk over there, I get the weirdest feeling about it. Oh, do I really want to be over here right now? But um, her, her husband that passed away from cancer, um, he was pretty not a very good soul toward the end. I mean, he was just real ugly to her and ugly to us and ugly to others. And I kept telling her when we lived in the other house next door, I said, you know, he's with us because um, I would go into the, into the um, laundry room because I kept hearing the washer door slamming and then the dryer door would slam and no, you know, nobody's back there. So I'd go back there and I'd ho holler at him. I'd say, Richard, stop it. <laughs> I said, this is driving me nuts. Just quit it. And he would stop and we wouldn't hear it for a couple of weeks. So then as soon as we moved from that property, which is right next door, it followed her over here, obviously. So unfortunately, I had to get rid of Richard. I had to uh, cleanse her home and went in there and talked for a bit with him. And I said, you know, I just can't put up with this. There's too much havoc going on and too many people being sick. And I said, you know, I've, just, I've had enough. You know, I just have. And, you know, with somebody who has a... Um, a really bad, you know, something bad like that. And they were angry and they were constantly, you know, causing chaotic issues. And it was just time, I'm sorry to say, but it was time for Richard to go. We couldn't do it no more. We just can't. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. it, he wasn't a bad guy before he got sick, right? Right. So this well, kind of just made him angry. Yeah. And um, Richard was a, um, he was what I want to call a um, police officer in the military, you know, an MP. Oh, an MP. Yeah, he had had his he had had his share of stuff to do, but he also uh, I think he grew angry, you know, as time went on. You know, he got divorced and married Betty, Mark's mom, and then of course um, it wasn't too long down the road, a couple like three or four years later, being married, that he just got sick and. Um, he ended up with colon cancer and, and, and it made him so ugly. Oh my God. He was so mean and I couldn't, I, it was hard for me to even visit <coughs> down there and they lived in Hutchison, Kansas. And it was really just hard for me to even be in the same room with him because the minute why I would walk in, it was just like, Oh my God, I didn't even want to stay five minutes, but I did it for mom. Yeah. You know, um, I just felt horrible about that. But, yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. So do you believe that he was the attachment? Oh, definitely. Can you tell if someone has an attachment when you're looking definitely. at them? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I wish I could do my own self, but. We can never we can never diagnose our own selves. I know, right? You know, because of the fact that we're, we just assume that. All this stuff, I mean, just because we can see it, that it doesn't affect us, but that's not right. true. Right. Yeah, we but just you can't look in a mirror and see it on yourself? Nope. Really? It's just like you can't pick the lottery uh, numbers. Sounds weird. Right. right. Thank you. You know how many times people have asked me that? <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, like I'm doing right. Do, what do, you, do you know the lottery numbers? And I said, yeah, but do you think if I tell you or I, or I go out and use those numbers, do you think it's fair to everybody else who bought a ticket? I always tell them it's one, two, <laughs> three, <laughs> four. Okay, good luck. <laughs> That's me, I suppose so. You know, or you can give them the phone number to dial a prayer. Maybe if they prayed about it. Eight six seven five three zero nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
It's the only phone number that I know I can I can say say out loud and everybody's gonna know exactly what I mean. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Especially if you're born, if you're an 80s kid, you know it. Yep. But yeah, that's one of the questions I always get asked. What are the power ball numbers? I'm like, I'm sitting there going like, seriously? What people don't realize is that we really can't say I would never like, say. Well, we could. I mean, to be honest, the whole thing is is, is not to do this for personal gain. Exactly, and or right. greed, or mm -hmm. greed, and um. So yeah, when I get that, you know, when I get that question asked or asked, I just sit there and go, "No, I'm sorry. <laughs> those suckers." Do you think I'd be sitting here right now? And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if I go play it, you know, and that's the we unbelievable. Well, I'm not going to play that game. No, I I is, even if you know them and you play it. They're probably not going to come in because you just changed the path. Right. And see, another thing, Denise, which is very valid. That's a very valid statement. Even if that, even if I went and played it and it just so happened that it came in, you know, they're going to say, oh, we know her. She picked them. Secondly, um, you know, to do that wouldn't be fair to anybody else who's playing the game. I mean, that'd be like taken away from anybody else who had, could have had a chance. Well, the thing is, is, you know, people go say, tell me all the time, you know, you're going to, you're going to quit your job when you win the lottery. It's like, I got to play the lottery to win the lottery. Right. 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 I, I can't throw money at, at something that everybody in the state's playing. Right. Right. The way, the way I see it is I'm throwing money away. I have a better shot at a slot machine, I believe. Oh, I hear you. Me too. I'll mm -hmm. I'll pick those. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. I, I just wish I could pick the right slot machine. That's <laughs> what I need to do. I need to figure out which slot machine's the one that's going to make me a winner. And I mean, I'm not talking a lot, just enough to pay for my trip back home. Mm -hmm. That's all I ever, you know, the one time I won the money to get back home, I was like, woohoo. Well, it's kind of like Mark and I one time went to Horseshoe Casino in uh, Council Bluffs, Iowa there. And I walked in and, you know, I'm such a cheapskate. You know, I'll pay play like $25 or 25 cent um, slots, right? Because I'm such a cheapo. Well, <laughs> I play pennies. Huh? You do I pennies? pennies? I do too. I do the pennies when I know I'm running close to being out of the 25 center. Well, anyway, so I go back past the high stake, you know one arm bandits. It's got a big old horseshoe there. And I'm thinking, I'm standing there, right? And I'm looking in there and I'm going, okay, that's the one. So I go right up to it and I play that sucker. Would you believe I won 800 bucks in two rolls? Hmm, that was wow. not too long ago. And it was just enough. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, I didn't go in there and pray like some people, oh, God, please bless me with a gazillion of dollars. Oh, I think more right. Please bless me with whatever you feel I deserve right now. It could have been ten dollars. It could have been a dollar, and it was on a dollar machine, by the way. Oh uh, well, I you know, threw ten in there, and I'm like, yeah, what the heck, Lord, whatever you want me to have. Well, you just found another place that people find God. Besides, there because I always tell people you find God in jail, in the yep. ER, and now the casino. Right. Yeah, and people do pray. You can see him. I mean, here in well, Kansas, I mean, you can see him praying right at that machine. I had one lady. I sat next to this one lady. She's such a cutie. Oh my God, she was like eighty something or another, and she was sitting next to me. And I said, and she goes like this with her hand on the the, the screen, and she's yeah. you know rubbing the screen yeah. and the screen and everything. And I, I finally looked. I like looked at her like this, like. Does that she work? Me, and she looked at me and she smiled and I said, who are you praying to? And she's like, well, God and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Ron always asks, does that work? Because you'll walk up. I, I, you'll I see, see these people them on the machine just, doing this. They're just tapping it while the thing's spinning. That. Right. They're just tapping the machine. I asked one lady, I said, does that do anything? She goes, I think so. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, man, you're going through a lot of work for that. Yeah. I know. It's like oh, wax on, you know, wax on, wax off. Yeah. Kind of thing. She was beating the crap your arm getting a little tired yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she was there for hours. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I guess maybe this is their only exercise. It could be. I mean, right. Yeah, Gary said first three 
million dollar winners in Missouri were bankrupt in three years. Yep, oh, they I'm were. Sure. I'm sure. Well, Hello, yeah. April. Hey, April. Multitasking seven boys. What? No. Are you sure? You ought to be used to that. <laughs> no I, don't know. I don't know who is April. I'm not. I'm, April, April's my cousin. That's her. And she, Hi, has, cousin. she has seven boys. Hi, seven boys and April cousin. <laughs> <laughs> And then we've got uh, Gary, Chad, Susan, and Mike are in the chat. And Crystal. Uh, so is Crystal. And I can't get my mouse to work. So we'll do it this way. Let's see who else is here. Um, Ross Golden. Mm -hmm. So we got quite a few people Susan in the chat. And Mike. Susan and Roberts. Yeah, it's Susan and Mike. You're right. They live down in Springfield. Springfield. Yeah, both of them yeah. are here. So, and then Susan says it's that's her at the casino. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I have a blast at the casinos, but yeah. I'm not sure what else is going on with me. Um, I'm currently revising my brochure because I have a big event coming up in um, the 18th of June. I'll be up in uh, Illinois and a lady by the name of Rebecca Williamson, um, you know, because I went down to Fort Madison not too long ago and did a big gallery and did a big ghost hunt and such down there. And it was put on by a lady by the name of Shy and and also, um, you know, everybody else that was there. We did a big gallery and uh, Rebecca asked me to come back to a big event that she's having. And so I'm revising my I'm not joking. I you guys would laugh if you could see this, but. It's a brochure that I was made about 15 years ago. So it looks nothing like me. Yeah. I look at it and I'm like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going through it and revising it. It's a three oh. trifold and it's got, you know, the inside leaflet in, in the middle and all that and all this information. But I thought to myself when I was back in 15 years ago, I'm like, wow, I really wanted to make sure people really understood me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. no, through this, so I'm redoing it. There's other things that I'd like to get in at this time and better pictures. And so I'm doing that. Um, I'm currently writing a um, a letter to a judge to open up a, a case that was clarified as manslaughter, but truly a murder case. And the lady that I'm working with on it is the mom. And she only has until October to reopen the case and because once you're charged you know with manslaughter for the three people that were involved of, with her son and her son was only 18 mm -hmm. um you know once once they charge you you know with uh, manslaughter you could come, still come back around for once we open up the case again and find new evidence and and charge them with murder right because once you're charged with murder you can't change that but you can sure change your manslaughter to murder Right. So I'm working on a big draft letter currently to the judge to um, for him to look at what I found in all the testimonies, the police reports, and also the um, autopsy reports. And you know what I find, found out is really, really kind of mad. Um, when I've done cases like this before, I get it all. I, I mean, even the, well, you know how it is when they draw a chalk mark around a body. Right. Or they, or the, when they do the autopsy, there's a person there, you know, like an outlined figure, and they mm -hmm. usually mark off where the like the scars were, or entry, you know, from stabbing and all that <coughs> stuff. They, they look, they never gave that part to Sandy. That I can say her name, you don't know her last name, no. but Sandy never received that part of the autopsy. So mm -hmm. I want to hear that. Huh? Why not? Well, I'm telling you why not. <laughs> because the the cops in this particular location are pretty dirty and the coroner Where has been pretty just the state. Yes, and, yes, uh, right. well, it's in uh your borderline area? borderline Nebraska, Iowa. Okay. Around your area. Mm -hmm. And so the police that handled this case really, 
let's say it was pretty botched. And uh, so when she presented the case to me, I said, oh, my God, yes, I will sit down and read it. And the stack of papers that I went through were probably a same one inch, probably four or five inch stack of testimonies along with everything else. So after I got an ingredient, it took me about a week to go through it, really, and having to highlight it and identify what did not sound correct, what gave me doubt, which, you know, you think about what wasn't correct, and then it gives you doubt, and then you have reason of suspicion, and then you see, okay, <laughs> this doesn't jive up with, you know, some of the testimonies from the people that saw what really happened to her son. It didn't jive. So I took the case. And I've been working that now. And she's only got until October because it's a three-year deal. So when you when they land somebody with manslaughter, you only have three years before you can come back and provide the judge with new evidence mm. to open the case back up to prove it was murder. Right. So that's what I'm working on. And that, that, uh, that letter has to be drafted in such a um, diligent, very precise um you can't jumble you know you can't jumble around on your words or anything you got to come right to the point and you got to prove the evidence you got to you got to be able to show just cause why he should reopen it and he will right. yeah so yeah i do criminal justice that's why i'm doing what i do but um yeah that's one case i'm working on currently and then of course in between times i'm taking care of betty mark's mom and working on my book i'm i am so far behind i'm so oh you know how i'm hoping to get that out this year denise uh, i hate to say this but i'm so far behind that i i don't even think i'm ever going to catch up i'm gonna have to quit my job to catch up yeah i mean well, and stuff, i'm behind in my job that's the problem <laughs> yeah i know you told me but look all this stuff that's going on with family related Ill, illnesses and this that and the other thing yeah well, I'm so frustrated because I wanted that out by December. Although, you know, I I do have the brochure getting ready to fix that up. And then I need to find a photographer because I know what I want for the book cover. Um, <laughs> and this is really good. <laughs> it's going to be so creepy. But <laughs> I can't wait to do that. And I'm looking for a photographer that will handle that for me. And then... Um, I'm going to do a documentary too. It's going to be kind of like uh, in line with the book as well. So when somebody buys the book, then they get this little disc that'll come with it where I'm sitting there telling pretty much the story. So you can have it either on a disc or you can have it on a book or both. Okay. April has a question for you. She goes, what about changing a, an old 22 years, it's 22 years old suicide case to murder? Is that even possible? I'll tell her to present it to me if she has all that. What I what I would need from her would be I would need the actual testimonies of all people that were involved. Okay, and that is the family and you know uh, all about the person. Um, I would need all that. Plus, I would need like police reports that they did a police report on it. Obviously, they're supposed to, but and then it would go all the way down to the autopsy as well. And, and um, there is no statute of limitations on murder, but there is double indemnity. You can't chart. You can't have somebody right. tried for murder and then retried for murder. Yes, yeah, exactly. a different murder. <laughs> right, right. So it yeah, has to be a separate, it. complete, different murder to be retried for murder. Right. right. Once you're labeled murder, you're done. You're it's <coughs> murder. Yeah. But yeah. And, no, April told me, so I, you know, she can contact me here on Facebook and. You know, I'd be glad to help her. You bet. So there you go, April. I know you have and so much so, so much stuff to do, April, that this is one more thing that you want to get involved in. <laughs> it's a lot. Tell her it will be, you know, it will be one of these things where first I get it and I kind of just shut everybody off and I read it. It takes me about a week to read through stuff and make my own notes. And then, um, you know, I always have a second set of eyes on it to another person that I trust uh, that will also put her eyes on it and then we collaborate and then mm -hmm. it's ironic because like this last case that I did or are still on um, when she and I got together it was just it was very eerie because 
she had her own notebook and she lives like 20 miles away. And when I'm working on my stuff and writing my notes and then, you know, voicing it into a um, recorder and then I would play it back and she'd read my notes and I would read her notes. And it was just too uncanny because it was pretty obvious to both of us. This case was not a suicide. This was total murder. Yeah. So in April's case, she says she goes, I have everything, including autopsy and photo and photos. Oh, and photos. Yeah. There you go. She's got it all. Hey, April, message me after the show, and I'll give you my address, and you'll have to send it all to me. And if you, if that's your only original stuff, you'll um, get copies made and send it to me because I'll get on it. Oh yeah, I'm a girl, I'm just gonna tell you <laughs> that was not suicide. Yeah, yeah. So it just wasn't. so you're aware, April's my cousin again. So. <laughs> But just send it to me. Yeah, just make sure that you. Oh yeah. Don't keep worry. her informed. She's smart. She's a smart girl. So don't you worry. I'll take care of her and, and the situation. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, we had a. My sister called me over the weekend, mm -hmm. or on Friday, to tell me that I have family members here in Kansas City. Oh yeah. That moved here from Baltimore. Have been here a little while. But don't know my last name. Yay. <laughs> I know I've had this last name for 38 years, but nobody right. knows what it is. Well, they didn't. They didn't anyway. And she, so my sister tells me this and I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? Right. You know? right. And the goodness, thank goodness she didn't tell him that I'm only 45 minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> So in the meantime, I tell her that I found another cousin. Just, I guess, kind of like payback, I guess. This was only two hours from her. <laughs> right. And I said, here's, here's their other brother. So my aunt had six kids. One died. And she got to keep one. And the state made her give all the others up for adoption. Whichever state it was. It was Virginia and Maryland. Both made her give up her kids. Okay. Except for one. She's got that one kid with her and they moved here to Kansas City. Her second, her oldest son is in Bristol, Tennessee. And I made sure my sister got his information. <laughs> so they can call her and bug her. My uh, His younger brother, the next one down, is in Pikeville with Judy. And yeah. then, you know, my other cousins, they're fine. I don't have a problem. All of these cousins have mental disabilities, all of them, mm -hmm. and they just yell all the time. They're, I, I think that they were, I think they were autistic before autistic was a thing, you know, yeah, I mean? sure. And they yell and they stutter a lot, and it's just frustrating for me because I can't hear them. I, I, I mean, I listen, but I can't hear. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah, and, and this has been an ongoing thing since I was a kid. This isn't like last week I decided I can't listen to people who stutter and yell because it's not that. So now I'm sitting here going, okay, do I need to see this aunt before she dies? Because she's my mom's only, only sibling that's alive now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I keep telling him, I said, I don't know what I, what I need to do. Do I need to find a way to go see them, but let them know that I live. He said 18 hours away. <laughs> hey, uh, everyone related, anyone related to Denise that's ever called after how many, whatever, how many years didn't yeah. matter. First thing they ask money, do you have any money? Can we have yeah. some? That's, yeah, that's that's I'm, common in every conversation. Except I mean, no, 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 no. every conversation on, it starts off with, "Can you give me some money?" These yeah. are the family members that we haven't heard from in. This is why we don't want to talk to them. I haven't talked to <laughs> Michael in. We know where it's going to go. I I think it was 1979 was the last time I talked to my cousin Michael. The last time I talked to my aunt Nellie, she came to my house in Kansas City, Missouri. So she thinks I live in Kansas City, Missouri. That's okay. And that's good. That's fine. Good luck finding me. <laughs> um, but she came to see me 
after I had Lacey. So that's been about 36 years, which is fine, you know. But my cousin Keith, I haven't talked to since 1982. Cool. So needless to say, these are people, they're strangers to me at this point. Right. right. They would be, sure. And, and you know, my uncle, so my other uncle on my dad's side, it was my dad's um, youngest brother, well, second youngest brother. I found him after years and years and that, and he, he unfriended me because I wouldn't loan him a thousand dollars. Yeah. Of he course. thought I had a lot of money because I was driving a charger. Oh, of it course. was a rental car. Mm. You know, you, it's, you don't assume somebody has money just because of the car that they drive. Now, right. I was driving a Ferrari, maybe, you know, but no, it was, a, I, mean, I wouldn't have fit, that name, fit the kids in the car if it was Ferrari, but, you know, <laughs> it was a charger. I always thought people that drove Corvettes and real nice cars were broke. Yeah. That's what I assume because. They had these big car, payments car rich. And, and insurance to pay. That's right. Well, let, me tell you, let, me, let me just tell you, Mark and I owned a, a I car for bet. almost two years. And yeah. Mark worked his ass off for mm -hmm. those plates, the insurance, and to, yeah. to, uh, to drive it. Well, we both did. You know, I, we both actually chipped in on that and, and worked that because... I had the best time of my life when I drove up and I applied for a job in a Corvette. <laughs> uh, I, felt, I want you to know, I want you to know that um, I did it on purpose. I didn't do it because, you know, I was trying to be rude, but I did it on purpose because let me tell you, not everybody that drives a Corvette is broke. Some of these guys that we were on, Mark was in this car, car um, group for Corvette owners here in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Some of these people were loaded with money. That was just their toy to fix up on the weekend kind of thing. And right. here we go mm -hmm. over here going, what's that like? <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a friend that that's what he does in Leavenworth is mm -hmm. he, he um, buys old Corvettes and parts them out and fixes up his and he bought, he used his sprint stock to buy his car triple black is what he called yeah. it. And he, he treated that car pretty damn good. Every once in a while he drove to lunch. So I got to ride in it every once in a while, but you know, he was my boss and nice guy. And, you know, so he ended up uh, retiring from, from the business and sold the car. I was so sad for him, but he's still selling parts. So in April, my mom's side, this, this is my mom's side. The, Albert was the first one that asked me for money. Oh, yeah. The others. So, mm -hmm. and uh, April is a cousin on my dad's side. So, but yeah. My, my family history, you need a scorecard. Ron, Ron, Ron always says he, he holds up his hand and says, scorecards, scorecards for anyone who needs a scorecard. Exactly. <laughs> because my family is such a, it's an unusual there's stories to go with everything. Oh, sure. I mean, going all the way back to them first coming over from from the from the old country coming here, and the Native Americans, and part of my family as well. And you know, April was just she shared a story with me um, a couple weeks ago that uh, on my dad's side of the family that some of the Shawnee Indians killed members of our family. So. Let me go turn this thing. It was. Wow. Uh, so I would love. I would love. My dad, my father, um, had Cherokee in his bloodline, and then my mom had Shoshone. So imagine that when they got together, my mom and my dad were like gasoline, fire and gasoline. Yeah, so, my, mine huh. is uh, on my grandfather's side. Mm -hmm. On my mother's side, he was Blackfoot. Oh, my wow. My grandmother on my mother's side is Cherokee. So needless to say, um, they got they got married when she was 14. She had her first kid when she was 14. And by the time, let's see, by the time my mom was like four years old, she had walked out and left. And this was wow. back in the... 
in the early 50s. So my grandfather raised my mother and three other kids with the help of my aunt, Belle, who is still alive and we're trying to get down to see her. She's 94. Oh, and wow. So you when she sees her. me, you know what's bad is when she sees me, she calls me Linda's girl. Oh. She, doesn't, she doesn't see me as Denise. It's Linda's right. girl. I look right. like my mom. So... Denise, when you go down there, make sure you take a handheld recorder and record it all. Because her voice you'll never hear again. You know what I mean? Like that. On I think that I, I think this is going to be the last time we see her. Yeah. So. Um, then make sure you record. Yeah. I, yeah. Make I sure need, you record. Well, I've been trying to find out how my mother and father met. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because yeah. I don't know. Um, because my dad was murdered when I was 10. Yeah. I never asked my mom. I never thought about that. It was so, at a dance. So and the thing is, is my uncle Jack just died. Um, right before we mm -hmm. went to Vegas, my uncle Jack died and that was my mother's only brother. And he was the next, my mom was the youngest, then uncle Jack, then aunt Nellie is the one that's now here in Kansas. And right. my aunt Chris, that was their, you know, Chris, Nellie, Jack, mom my aunt nelly might know how my parents met because i, I, said, at dance. I said at a dance it was kind of like a I, it looks like a town hall or some kind of a hall and so it was a is, my mom was only 15 my dad was 18 mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, mom lied on her marriage license it said that she was 18, 18. And, that her, and that her mother was dead yeah, and that my grandfather signed off on it, but they had eloped to Withville, and Withville is W Y T H E V I L L E. I found all this, you know. I know April's found it too, but April wouldn't have known that my mom lied about her age, you know, unless she was calculating. But yeah, right. and she wouldn't have known that my mom was lying about, you know, my grandma being dead, <laughs> and so and my dad was from Lynchburg. And my mom was from Saltville. And so they were far enough away from each other that I, it's like, I don't know how they would have met in right. the different, you know, these places. Cause Saltville is far enough off the main road to where it's a, it was about 30 miles. You know, when we went off the road, coming, going from the South on 81, to get back on the road, it was about 30 miles. So, mm -hmm. and Lynchburg is, you know, Pennsylvania County or Spotsylvania County, I think, but it's way, you know, it's north about four or five counties. It's like, how sure. in the hell would they have met? So, so there's kind of that going on. I mean, yeah, my mom quit high school. My dad went, my, my dad actually graduated high school in Baltimore. So what in the hell? Like I said, you you put all this crap together and you go, how in the hell did they meet? <laughs> so, and and they're so different, but they look like brother and sister. I mean, to be honest, if you look at pictures of my parents that I've posted out there, they look like brother and sister. And I look enough like my mom, but I also, ha I look like my dad. So, yeah. and my everybody teases that maybe you're the only one that was from your mom and dad. I'm like, mm -hmm. no. Oh, <laughs> I always said that to my mom. I always said in this whole clan of eight kids that my mother had and had seven surviving when I was, you know, a younger girl, I always said to my mom, you can tell me anytime, anytime it won't hurt my feelings that I'm adopted because I don't even act like any of my siblings. And I never acted like my mom. I was always, well, I was always different, but yeah, I just never acted like my siblings, you know, before 11. I mean, I, I, I was different after 11, but I never acted like anybody. Like I always felt disconnected, like adopted. I, I will tell you, <laughs> that's my story. I am so totally different than my sisters mm -hmm. that it's hard to believe that we're even related. Yep. I know them. Yeah. I met you. You weren't much different. Well, 
I was going, well, I was going to be different regardless, but yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was always a caretaker, always mm -hmm. trying to take care of everything. And yeah, not always. I mean, I, I, I think I have common sense. Let's go with that. Well, so, not only that, you probably were one of those types of kids too, that you got to see a lot of it and you knew better. That's where I was at. Yeah. yeah. I saw a lot of stuff I didn't need to see. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then you kind of knew better that it's like, whoops, well, I ain't going to, yeah. I ain't going to put that part, you know? Mm -hmm. from it. Well, as I tease, mm -hmm. as I tease my nephews, I knew which beehives not to poke. Right. Right. You know, I knew which things were going to bite me the hardest, I guess. So sure. I never did some of the things that a lot of kids do, but then I did a lot of things that a lot of kids never do. I mean, <laughs> me too. Yeah. Those are the weird, things you don't weird. talk about, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and April, never, ever going to take a... I don't want to know if I'm not related to my sisters. I don't want to know. Yeah, exactly. So... Exactly. Well, same here. I mean, even though I feel like I'm not... You know you are. But I know I am. And it's like, God, it was... Honestly, I was lucky really lucky to be the runt so I could see it all go before me. <laughs> you know what? I ain't having no babies at 17. I'm not going to be divorced by the time I'm 20. Yep. You know, <laughs> I mean, you saw it happen, you know, and for me, what I experienced was those things and I'm like, yeah, good, good, good. I don't want to do that. Right. You know? I always got to be the babysitter of everybody else's, all my three other sisters, their children. Mm -hmm. I was the babysitter of all those kids. And so I kind of learned early about taking care of children. Right. You know, because I was 11, 12, and 13. And I'm like, you know what? This is hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, yes. I didn't have a baby until I had Robert and I was 31. Yeah, it's so, not easy. Yeah, I, I, was, I was everybody's babysitter too. But yeah. I mean, I was working full time as a babysitter by the time I was 12. Mm -hmm. Y'all can't see mm -hmm. people doing that now. No. no. I mean, I don't think anybody would leave your kids with a 12 year old. But no, I, would. I was I was a lot mm -hmm. more mature than a lot of 12 year olds because of all the stuff I'd already been through. Right. Uh, right. And and my mom was home. She I mean, we were right across the street most of the time. Yeah. But there was when I by the time I was 14. I had a full-time job every summer watching kids. Mm -hmm. So I either did detasseling, <laughs> I either did detasseling or I did babysitting. Babysitting is probably harder than detasseling corn. Oh heck yeah, it was. Just heck so yeah. you just don't usually get sunburned babysitting. Thank you. April said she'd leave all seven of them with you. Not with <laughs> me, with the twelve year old. Denise, I'll come down and we'll do we'll do a, a weekend with seven kids. Oh, hell, no. we'd have to go to Wisconsin to do that. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, that's okay. I'll go get that part from you. Did you hear me? That's okay, because I'll buy some cheese. Cheese? Cheese, cheese, cheese. Oh, so Darius was a milkman when for his first job. My first job, besides babysitting, was ice cream scooper for mm -hmm. Friendly's Ice Cream. What was your first job, Cheryl Ann? My that first job. My very true first job that I got a real paycheck from was for the Lincoln Public Schools. I would go in after class and I would clean off the chalkboards and to help with the janitor, um, you know, throw away trash. And then I would look through all the um, desks and make sure nobody left their homework behind or things like that. And I worked for like two hours and yeah, I did that every day for a whole, uh, a whole year for school but that was fun because i got to see i got you know i got to play with the chalkboard and the chalk and you go you know smack the erasers together oh yeah, yeah. that was all right by me because i got to make a mess and then the janitor would come along and clean it up but yeah i had a blast with that and writing on the chalkboards and things like that yeah <laughs> so carl what was your first job not uh that i actually got paid for yes yeah okay Let's see, I was, I was about eight, and I was selling grit newspaper magazines. Oh, yeah, wow. grit. That's a long time ago. Huh. Yeah, in a town of 100 people. 
That is so cool, though. Really, that is cool. So, what was yeah. yours? Mine. Your first paid job. I uh, spent one summer putting our high school together that I was going to go to, putting all the desks, Furniture. thousands and thousands of desks, chairs, you name it, tables. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, it was a paycheck, but I guess my first real, was at a gas station. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, there gas, there. changing oil, and that's that's when I you know, learned to work on cars and I did all that and didn't get paid because dad well, I, I was station. doing that before, but that was then I got he got a paid job actually, doing that. Actually right. got to learn a lot more there. Funny thing is, is the guy he's we're so friends with the guy that he worked he worked for his brother. Right. Yeah. Oh and yeah. we're so friends with him. Um he lives not too far from Ron's mom now. So um I talked to him just before Ron's birthday last year. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But so Everybody out there, share what your first job was. Is it was it better than a milkman? Baby, you know, better than a paper route, you know. Oh, yeah. My my actual very first uh, legitimate job at seventeen, I worked for Mountain Bell um, in Colorado, where I where I would do orders for telephones on the wall. Mm -hmm. thing for people and customers and I was a customer service and I worked with them for let's see one two three three years three or four years and that and, probably and became quest telephone uh, exactly and that's yeah. who I work so I work for that company that owns quest telecom now mm -hmm. nice that was the best thing you got fired I've never been fired I've never <laughs> the best thing I've been fired from actually I've been fired from volunteering Couple yeah, times. that's that's a family thing. Yeah, it is. We got a family uh, family history of getting, we have to keep going. getting fired from mm -hmm. volunteering. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I've you know, never been fired. Are, yeah, my my mom and dad used to deliver meals on wheels, and they got they, they did it for what two or three years, and then they got fired for it. For what? I know you think how do you get what? fired from delivering meals on wheels? Right. It was. Right. How do you get fired from were, volunteering? They were getting too many complaints about their food being cold. Well, well when they would deliver it to some of these people, some of these, you know, they're, they they live by themselves. They didn't have anyone to talk to. So they got to know each one along the route, and they got to talking more and more each visit. So by the time. Their food was probably cold by the time it got to the end. There was a lot of chatterboxing along the way. Yeah, and it took a little yeah. time off that food and it got a little too well, cold. Well, like I said, right. a lot of these people lived by themselves and they they had really, they didn't have any family. They didn't have no church. They had no one else to talk to. And they, they were lonely, you know? Yeah. You will keep your people happy when you're delivering. <laughs> hey, Cheryl Ann, where can everybody find you? Because I know you got to go. Well, um, they can just find me on Facebook under Cheryl Ann Elliott Fletcher, or they can call me and text me, and my number is 402-217-6334, and that's just the best way to do it is to text me and make sure <laughs> people stay with her up to, and you know, people are texting all the time, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, hey, what are you doing? It's like, who, are, who is this? <laughs> but I've done that to Rex a few times. But yeah. you know what? And if you are going to call her or text her, please do it at, an, at a good time. No later right. than 10 p.m. Central because yeah. that's kind of. Yeah. Growing that's up when we really, did, if that's we got really phone calls after 9 o'clock, we knew it was an emergency. So right. yeah, And then the minute I hear that thing, and then the minute I hear it go, bing, bong, I'm thinking, oh, when my God, Robert, yeah. you know, is Robert okay, my son? You know what happened? That, that's yeah. me. I do the same thing. So exactly. well, you, you take good care of Betty and tell Mark we said hi. Oh, yeah. I hope you have a great night. Mark's sound asleep. He he's sound asleep. Are you awake? Oh, here he say hi to you. Oh <laughs> hi Mark. <laughs> yeah, he's awake. Yeah. He's, he's he's like, yeah, he knows he knows he's gotta go get his mom here in a minute. We're gonna eat dinner. So yeah. Thank you for having me on here. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. I'll see yeah. you later. Have a great night. Have fun, okay? Until April to get on that if she really wants me to work on she it. Will. She will. All right. Leave. Love you guys. Good night. See you. Bye -bye, Good night. Bye. <laughs>
So apparently, I'm I have not heard from our second guest tonight. Right. And uh, so, whether if he shows up, he shows up. If not, oh well. You know, not much we can do. So. <laughs> Well, a few of them put in what their first jobs was. Pastor Gary put in, he measured crop ground for the government. Mm -hmm. And then Susan Roberts put in, my first job was working at, and I'm not even going to pronounce it. Wiener Oh, yeah, the Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah, but uh, she also used to work, I believe, at Whataburger at one point. Oh, really? Then Darius uh, did telesales one summer. Yep. And he was and kept and changing was also, his name. And he was also the milkman. Right. So, so yeah, there's a lot. So, but yeah, April, just if you can't find her information, let me know and I'll get it to you. And I did work fast food. I did, I did that too. I worked at uh, Captain D's. I worked at McDonald's. Uh, Ron, I was there one day. Yeah, one day. I worked for Wendy's for a little while. I got a better offer the well, that night. <laughs> yeah. They it, said, we need you to start right away. And I went, okay. Yeah, wow. that'll work. No, I was living in St. Joe and worked at McDonald's for a little over a year. Hmm. Then we moved from St. Joe back to Cameron. And then I went to driving Cameron taxi cab for a while. That was fun. Oh, that was weird. Taxi cab in a small town. <laughs> they don't work that way. Actually, Chad, they still bag our groceries here in Some. Lewisburg. They, uh, if you go through regular checkout, they will bag your groceries. And we actually have a few people that actually take the groceries out to their cars for them. Um, but they, they kind of reserve that for the elderly people here in Lewisburg. Right. But that's because our, not me. Oh, I thought you. I go through self checkout. I just don't care most of the time. So you know, I go through and let them bag it. Yeah, and like I said, if they want to bag it, go for it. But nine right. times out of ten, when I go to Price Chopper, I'm getting two or three things and I'm leaving. Now the other day, I let them bag it because I actually grocery shopped there yesterday. I wasn't driving into town when Price Chopper's two miles away. So yeah. The, I the that gas makes prices sense. is affecting me personally now. Right. Oh, yeah. These gas prices are unbelievable. Yeah, it was higher in Houston, Missouri than it was here. So, um, Our friend, uh, we went to our friend's wedding. Farah is officially mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. As of Saturday, a real nice guy. And, if, and some of you may remember Farah. She was on the show just a few weeks ago. Right. Yep. And we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. Everybody in Springfield knows her. Yep. A lot of people know her. Yep. From her old shows and yeah, she everything. Yeah, she seemed very happy, and we had we had a good time. Well, that's good. It was a, that's good. It the wedding was actually bigger than ours. The amount of people that was there. Did you ever work for Connie and Jerry? I think she's asking you. Uh. I don't, I don't know, know who Connie and Jerry is. <laughs> I, I have no Evelyn idea. Is. I don't know who Evelyn is. Um, Evelyn, who are you talking to? You know, maybe we can tell you. Right. Connie and Jerry says it's uh, 429 in Hamilton. Today. It yeah. was, what was it here today? It was 409 or 409. 404 yesterday. Yeah. Oh, at the cab? Yeah. That's who I worked for. There you go. Yep. So, it. I'd I mean, they said names that, until she mentioned yeah. that said cab. I was like, that a long time ago. So, but yeah, we we were on our way down there and we getting ready to turn on to what sixty. And my phone said, "No, don't go this it's way." All closed because they ended up closing down sixty. We were get and we were hurting for time. Yeah, it said that we would be lucky if we made it there by one twenty. Really, and the wedding was at one. One. And we still had to change. Yeah, because we were wearing jeans. You know, we were wearing comfortable clothes. And right. so, but we did do one thing. We stopped at Macadoodles in, in uh, Springfield. Well, I had to pick something up for the fair. Always have to bring liquor. Okay. Always yeah. bring liquor. And uh, he goes, well, what do you want to get her? And I go, I don't know. And we looked around. I mean, we probably wasted more time at the 
there than we should have. But he had said something about getting her bourbon because I know yeah, she, she likes Four Roses bourbon. And he, but of course he didn't know what mixture, what mash bill she liked. So it's like, okay, I don't know. I said, but you well, know, there's what? different it, like Four Roses. There's there's two different mash bills. One's a little higher rye, and the other ones is you know more corn. Right, it's a little sweeter. The rye one's gonna is gonna have a little little bite to it. Right, but then they also use five different yeast strains, so that gives you ten different profiles, ten different taste profiles, and they all are different. Oh, really? So you actually yeah yeah if it's a single barrel, you actually have to look at the barrel. And it's got a O or a B or you know it's got the abbreviations for whatever it is. Right. And then you can look at it and see the taste profile. It's like a Myers Briggs for bourbon. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's. I mean, you could have one that's got like a peppery, spicy taste. Some people may not like that. Some people might. Then you got some there to give you like a fruitier, you know, floral right. taste, which is going to be a sweeter one. Right. I, you know, you don't know. I have, I have no idea what you know what one so i, I hate to get the wrong one because did you get her the right one yes we, we got did, but we didn't get her bourbon we got her uh pina colada moonshine with pineapple yep oh gone the next day yes. and, <laughs> no, i bet it was and so not only did we get her that um uh, because it was a homestead wedding i took yep. i took jars lids rims so that she can can sure gel for making jelly. And I took her uh, strawberry butter that I had made. It's like apple butter, but with strawberries, strawberry jam with rum. She's never canned before. I, I right. thought she had. And cherries and well, she's going to learn shishito <laughs> peppers. So, and the moonshine jar is reusable because it's not painted. So it's clear so she can use it for canning. So like I said, it was a whole homestead gift in a diaper box. Hey, the diaper box got the most comments out of any. I, I bet it did. <laughs> I bet it did. I so, told her she I said, she went, no, no, fair, fair is uh my age, <laughs> so there's not going to be any children. Um, but there were 10 chick or 15 chickens and nine guineas. So the guineas <laughs> were apparently little pains in the butt, but the chickens, oh, they were, always are. They're well, noisy, but, they're irritating, and but they eat ticks, yes, and they also eat snakes. Oh, yeah, and other oh, ones. yeah, yeah, they're but they also like to land on top of the highest place, yep. which is usually your house or the barn, yep, and scream. Yeah, yeah. they're a little on the, the mean, tough side. Those guineas. Oh, they are. Yeah. Their, they're... their eggs that they lay are like rocks. They're hard to break. Yeah, they're getting ready to turn them loose pretty soon. Right. Yeah, you turn them loose, they'll eat all the ticks out there. Yeah, that's what they want. And those they'll set on something and watch. And if a snake goes by, man, yep. they're down on it in a heartbeat. Yep. That's why they're hoping. I guess they got nine of them. They're hoping four or five kind of stay right in that area. Right. They're going to put them outside. They're all going to stay too. there as long as you I put think so too. out for them. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, the other animals won't mess with them. I've never seen a guinea actually get killed by anything. Huh. Yeah, they're fast. Their head are moving 90 mile an hour all the time while they're yeah. chirping and you got enough wildlife around his house to take care of the ticks. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I guess possums eat a lot of ticks, too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. We got plenty of possums. Yeah, we do, too, around around town. Yeah, we got foxes out the ass. But um, <laughs> I'm going to have to run, um, but I'll be back. I've just got to run over to Leah's but what? to help with the kids for a few minutes. But um, I'm going to leave him here. But everybody, please make sure you tune in to find out when my new show is going to start. I have, I'm working on it. I'm definitely working on it. 
And uh, but I will let you know it is going to be here. You will be able to find it here on the Bill of Rights Network with with Carl's um, group. I just don't know exactly when, and uh, I need to have some things I've got to change up, like uh, my intro, and some. And considering that it's always been uh, oral, now I got to make it visual. So, um, so you guys be aware that that's what I'm working on, and uh, I'm thinking, what maybe June twentieth? Does that sound like a good time? Yeah, that's about right. So, because I don't think Jackson you, Morgan orange cream. I've yeah, it's about three weeks. Mm -hmm. like that should give me enough food. time to get my intro ready because I'm in the process of. Let's see. So how on, long are you going to last for uh, Carl fires your butt too? Probably three, three and a half years. <laughs> that seems to be my time. Three and a half years. Yep. Let's see. In that blind contract, it said lifetime. <laughs> so, but yeah, you guys, you know, I'm trying to unbrand what I had branded to, to make it all mine. And then I will be able to verbally tell people where to find me, where I don't have to keep changing everything out every time I change. I know <laughs> so, it's and, a lot easier. They get to see you. They get to see your guest. Too. And I can share pictures and things like that. Cause some of the things that my guests share with me, our pictures and they're really hard to share um on verbally you know yeah that's, that's so, good yeah. so i think that it's going Video. to be, be good um, well that and it's easier to see the comments on this than the platforms you was using before right and and I your think, guest gets to see the comments too and i am one of the few people that haven't been banned from twitter or from uh youtube yet so maybe we'll even be on youtube then yeah, I'll be on YouTube over on your your other page. Yep. So I would like for you guys to invite you guys all to come and uh, be part of the Paranormal Pride when it starts up on uh, June twentieth. And uh, I'm working on my guest list and a bunch of other things. But um, just make sure that you mark it on your calendar, and it is going to happen. It is going to happen. So, and I've already got the guy working on the recording to re-record my uh, intro. So, once he does that, then I can make the visual to go with it. Right, right. Because so, that takes, I don't know if people realize how long that takes to make a, an original visual that's your own. So, when I did uh, Sean's, Reverend Sean Whittington's, that took me about three and a half hours of right. just sitting there doing that to have the fade in um, and the fade out and with the music, the fade out as well. So it's, it's always interesting to see how that goes, but I will be back here in about 25, 30 minutes or less. So if the show's over, thank you guys for listening. Give Ron some shit for me. And oh, April, we were. April, I just bought banana pudding moonshine as well. Ooh. So, <laughs> it's a cream. Ooh. It's a cream. Yeah. From Old Smoky. Uh, that feels so good over a banana split. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Milkshake. So, how has Ron been doing? Woo. Busy. Busy, busy. Yeah. Coin uh, machines wearing you down. Yeah, I'm dealing with some idiots right now. Uh oh. Let's turn off one of these. This could be why it's hot. Idiots, at, idiots at work or at the. Uh, no, it was Walmart in Manhattan. They oh. lost their keys. I think the manager left with the keys or something, but got them another set of keys. Now they're just going in there and pulling the dirt tray and putting the machine out of service, and they're not putting it in right. No, I had to drive two and a half hours to go push in this dirt tray. Fuck. And now it's back out again. I called them. It took forever to get through. Uh -huh. Once I finally got through, I thought i talked to someone intelligent but i didn't that's not from through how to do it how to go you know it's real hard oh i know they say, oh yeah we'll take care of it we'll take care of it well they haven't right so, so have you been any more horse racing or is that mm -hmm. done with this time of year or are you still doing no nah, i got belmont coming up a couple weeks 
I, I mean, who's look, looking good in that one? I don't know. I guess uh, the horse that won uh, the Kentucky Derby is supposed to run in it. Rich Strike. Yeah. Think he's going to get lucky again? No. No. That was, a, would say, a one-time fluke. Yeah, it was really fluky. I mean, they didn't even the, – the owners and the trainer didn't think the horse could win. Yeah. when you I mean, 80 a, to 1, they had to – you think they would have put something on their own horse, but I know a you, lot of owners and trainers do, but you know, you got a thirty thousand dollar horse compared to three million dollar horses out there that are expected to run and win it, you know, in the long run. And this thing just come from the back like there was no tomorrow. Right. Well, I, and he had never done anything. The mm -hmm. only race the horse had ever won was a maiden claiming 30,000 maiden claimer. That's how, that's how they got the horse. They bought him in a maiden race. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. They bought him for 30,000. He ran one, a mate. It's called the maiden special weight. Those are protected. You can't buy them. Right. They ran him in that. And he got totally smoked in it. So yeah, after a few months, I'm sure the by the horse's breeding, he didn't show anything in the workouts. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's not bred real well. Right. He's bred to run all day. He's just not going to show much speed. You know. Yeah. In so I'm sure the trainer and the, and the Joe Sharp is a really good trainer. I mean, he they didn't think the horse could run. He wouldn't have put him in a maiden thirty. But I'm sure he got with the train, you know, the other owners and said, hey, it's probably not. Let's put him in a race he could maybe win. So they put him in a, you know, maiden 30 claimer and he got claimed. He did win by 10 lengths. But and then he come back and he, they run him in, you know, some option claimers, you know, allowance races, basically. And mm -hmm. Yeah, he's running seconds and thirds, and then they put him in, you know, the three-year-old prep races, and he just run thirds and fourths. Right. That, I mean, not a distant third and fourth, not nothing close. Like I say, he hadn't showed really anything. Right. He shouldn't even have been in the race except for, you know, one withdrew. No, but it was a shock to everybody. I mean, I watched yeah. that video and video, and I'm like, this horse is way back here, and then all of a sudden, it's like something lit a fire under its ass. Yeah. And the way it went in and out. Yeah. Instead of just hugging the inside, you know, pass one and go back to the inside. That horse went from inside to outside to middle to everywhere across there. They just, some, there are horses that do love certain tracks. Now, he obviously loves Churchill surface. Oh, he must. Yeah, because that's the only other race he won was at Churchill. Oh, really? Yep. I wonder. Yeah, if you know, a few years ago, the, the horse that got disqualified in the Kentucky Derby, remember he had won the race and got disqualified for interference? Mm -hmm. That horse actually was put in a maiden 16,000 claimer. Yeah. Hmm. They took that. His breeding was a little, little obscure. Mm -hmm. This is down at Gulfstream. His very first start was a maiden sixteen claimer. You could have bought that horse for sixteen thousand maximum security. He won by I don't know ten twelve lengths. He won real easy. Right. Then, then he wasn't for sale. Now, obviously, that horse hadn't been doing nothing in the mornings, no. and you know. And I know the owner on that one. He's got tons of horses. He's like, eh, throw them out there. Get it. Let's get a win. But, you know, you stop and think. There they took off. They went around the one, the two, on the back straightaway. Going in three is about when this horse yeah. broke loose, right? Well, they're on that back straightaway. They're, the front horses are at top speed pretty much. Yeah. You know, running. Oh, he did, you he gotta did. stop he and think how many horses. more miles per hour that yeah. horse had to run. You know, it yeah. is three or four miles an hour easy. Yeah, and those, it was. Those are two really nice horses that he run down. 
Yes, he would. Yeah, no, he's a real nice. I know those. I know. I know Zandon and uh, Epicenter. I've been watching them from day one. They they mm-hmm. are good horses. Yeah, and they and ran them down. Yeah, that's the least to say right there. Because I mean, I figured when he got up there at the close, it was going to be a three way, you know, neck to neck coming to the line. But when he it, passed them, it reminded. Like, it, it looked like when mine that bird won. At fifty something to one, right? It looked just—I mean, he, he just hugged the rail and kind of did the same thing. Well, there were some happy winners I know around there. It wasn't very many, <laughs> no. But there's a few that will always take the long shot, just yep. say the hell with it, and then bid their others. But to do the long shot like that, eighty to one. Oh yep. my god! Yeah. I think it was what 2005. It was a Fleet Alex ran a Kentucky Derby. He ended up running third, but Jeremy Rose was a jockey. He's not, it wasn't a top notch jockey. I'll put mm-hmm. it that way. He was, yeah, okay, but it's cheaper tracks. He was good, but he, he gave him the, about the worst ride you could, you could give a horse. I right. mean, he, he had by far had the best horse. That was the one that Giacomo ended up winning at like 50-something to one. Right. Well, you watch the replays. This jockey, he he ran he ran him up into the ass end of about every horse he could find. He'd, he'd run up and had to check. and run up and check. And, I mean, the poor horse, I mean, he just he gave him the worst ride you could possibly right. get. Right, he didn't turn him loose. Oh, my. It, well. He, he kept, like I said, he kept running him up in a, a pile of horses and then have to check back. And right. It, it was a horrible ride. Yeah. Bump drafting I thought, don't I work thought, in horse racing. Well, <laughs> it, but it, but it helped me on the net. I didn't hit that race, but the Preakness was the next race. And I told everybody, I said, the fleet Alex is going to win the Preakness easy. I, they're going to bring all those. Those chump horses from the Kentucky Derby back, and they did. Giacomo, all, all the top three finished. They all come running back, and uh, they anyway. They, uh, I said, I, I pounded that race. I said, Fleet Alex is going to win it. There's another horse they held back at Love Pimlico, and uh, he's kind of a, a local horse, but he's a, a pretty good horse, right? Now he, but. He was totally overlooked. He was, I don't know, like 25 or 30 to 1. And I said, well, he likes track and everything. He may have to run him down. Sure as heck, man, that horse busts out there. He's got a big lead, and then the Fleet Alex gets free. And he come around. I don't know if you ever saw that. When he's, they're coming at the top of the stretch, and that horse veers out, hits him. Jeremy Rose almost falls off. I mean, he's almost on his side right. of the horse. Somehow hangs on. Okay, this is a jockey. I said gave him the worst ride. Well, he did something that most jockeys probably couldn't do was right. stay on that horse. Well, he ended up still winning. The other horse hung in for second, but because the other horse didn't finish in front of a fleet, Alex, they didn't have to disqualify him. Right. So they left the order finished that. Why well, I, I hit that superfecta for ten thousand dollars that I split with my dad. And right. the trifecta now we made about I made about eighteen thousand that day. Oh awesome. Yeah, we had we had a I had a really good day. That was fun. That don't happen too often. No. No. <laughs> no, it don't. No, April said something about the uh that cinnamon or cinnamon whiskey, I guess the Jack mm-hmm. Daniels. I can't I can't do cinnamon when I was little. I don't know if you guys did it. Will we buy those red hots? Which that's that stuff from what I understand tastes just like it. Right. The fireball and all that. Yeah. I mean, we would load our both jaws up and stuff as many of those red hots in our mouths. Uh-huh. And just kind of suck on it for hours, it mm-hmm. seemed like. Well, we'd get we'd get cinnamon oil and break toothpicks off and yeah. put them in there and let them set and yep. then pull them out. And so we did all that, but yeah, the fireball cinnamon whiskey. Yep. That is some pretty good stuff. That's one of the biggest well, sellers we got. From what there. I understand, it tastes just, they said it tastes like those red hots, but see when we did that, we did it so much. 
those red hots it, it like kill your taste buds for a couple of days i mean you right really <laughs> tasty and i i can't even look at it. if i go in a candy aisle and i see red hots i just go Ugh. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand looking at them now that's why i can't i can't i won't even try fireball i thought oh. i could you know like a little i i just can't do it no, it wouldn't be wise. But no, I just no, but no. it is some good stuff, and it mixes with so much. That's the fun part. There's our TV cat. This is Coco. She had to come up. She's been kind of hanging right here, wanting to come up. Yeah, it's a stranger shot than a lot of your sweet shots, your <laughs> Jello shots, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, we had one deal up there at the restaurant and as we was closing down they came up and bought uh 18 shots of fireball oh to hand out i tried finding uh luke's scotch i can't find it really nope it's it's not even uh officially listed as as registered that mm -hmm. you can even buy it or, or sell it in Missouri. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. I think you can in Kansas, but I haven't found it yet. So he's, if he does bring it over, and you guys, you could sell that by the shot, and I'm sure you can get a premium price for it. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm yeah. Sure. Just like the, uh, beer that but see you have. would have something that that no one else has right exactly and the same thing we're yeah. going to be carrying the beer yeah that he's got over there that yep. he's part of up there on draft and nobody around here carries it at all the yep. nearest place is in ohio so yeah that's going to be a premium beer so what's what was his beer again i've seen uh, it. I couldn't tell you the name of it. I, know I was going to say, I, I think we've seen that somewhere. I, I don't remember. You've probably where. seen it out in Vegas. Because I, the, yeah, the I Ohio know. deal flies people out to Vegas yeah. for a big party that they put on at one of the places out there. And then from there, they fly them to the UK to the distillery over there. So, yep, that pender yeah, in, man, that's hard to, it's hard right. to get. I can't, it's hard to come by. I, just, I was wanting to try it, but. Well, everything goes right. He should have. Can he ship some over to you? Mm-hmm. Why yeah. don't you just do that? Ship well, that's what he's miles. working on. He's getting home, getting here to the United States first and get everything settled in and then start doing that. But, uh, yeah, he should have his passport today or tomorrow okay it was in london the tracking number showed it in london so okay yeah yeah we talked for hours last night after the show and everything so he's getting everything all settled up over there his other jobs he's got going on and uh, getting them finalized and then getting ready to head to the u.s so he's gonna like go he to said, he's going to texas to the house He's owned that house for quite a while. He yeah. has never slept in that house. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so he sees it all the time with the cameras, but. <laughs> Is anyone living in it? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. His girlfriend's living there. Oh, okay. That's well, at least someone's taking care of it. Yeah. She just moved in there a month ago. Before okay. that, nobody was there. He had his neighbor's elderly couple down the road. They would come up and check it and do things around there for him. If a package showed up, he'd call them. He'd sit on the camera, give them the code to the garage. They'd open the garage door up and slide mm -hmm. it in and show, shut it back. And then he'd change code, and, you know, did all that stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty neat. Yeah, he had, let's see, he had bought that house with 25 acres. And then here, four or five months ago, the elderly people over there were selling a piece of property off that butts right up to Luke's property. So he bought 40 more acres. So there's 65 acres with it down there. Yeah. 
So yeah, as far as the scotch, since it's not registered in Missouri, I don't with your liquor license, I don't know if you'll have to do something special to get around. I mean, him bringing mm. it in there. Yeah, I I'll have see to see why. I'll have to see. You may have to do something a little different. That could be on private parties. But, but I do know, I won't mention the name of the liquor store, but I know they have bought stuff down there at a distillery in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And they actually brought it back to their liquor store. You can't get it in this area. They would buy it from the distillery in Kentucky and then take it back to their store and sell it. Of course, you know, mark the price up quite a bit. Mm hmm. And they would sell it at their store, the retail right. store. Right. You couldn't get it in the state. So they exactly. did it. I don't see why yours would be any different. No. April recently did a tequila shot followed by pickle juice. Yeah. That was a new one. I'll bet it was. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I heard like April's sister Crystal brought back some stuff from Ireland that you just can't buy here. Right. You can't get it. They can only make it over there. Man. That we tried a bunch of different ones. But it was funny. She came to the investigation up at Malvern. Uh-huh. I I she said something about it. she went to, she just got back from Ireland and that. And I said, wow, that'd be great if, you know, you bring back some stuff. She goes, oh, I did. And I was like, oh, really? How much? She goes, I don't know. It's all out in my trunk. I mean, everything she had was in her trunk still. Right. So that's whole. she goes, you want me to bring some in? I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's where we had them set yeah. up on the counters. Yeah, yeah, I remember that night. Yeah. Yeah, that was some good stuff. Yeah. It was. Yeah, was, like I said, it's a lot different. You, you can't get it here. No. But yeah, I mean, that is one country I'd like to go to is because of the you know paranormal and you know just see over there in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're changing a lot over in Ireland right now. I guess uh, what Luke said, they're trying to break away from the UK. Yeah. And. Of course, Northern Ireland is still with the UK. Yep. Okay. Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland are talking again about joining up again for the whole country of Ireland mm -hmm. and break away from the UK. Yeah. So, a lot of that going on over there. He said a lot of the countries were getting ready to try to break away. So, yeah, we got talking about the Queen and Everything over there. I guess when she was a younger lady, she was in the Royal Air Guard. Yeah. Over there. She worked on airplanes. Yeah. And tanks. I was she like, was really hey. actually, I you know, I don't I don't give a crap about a king and queen and nothing, but she no. actually is a really cool lady. Mm -hmm. She loves thoroughbred horse racing. I mm -hmm. mean love it. I got in fact they got a thing that's I think it's next weekend that's that's like their big day oh yeah over there and she is always there yeah i think she does own some horses too but oh i'm sure the royal she's always does. there for that yeah she loves it so i don't have a problem with that yeah well they're jumping all over the gun control again over that shooting down there and then you've seen the uh where was I should have asked Cheryl Ann about it because it was up there in Lincoln. And every day, the car ramming up there that killed two and injured 19 yep. Sunday. Up there at Lincoln, car ran through a crowd of people. Yeah. I mean, it's getting, it's getting totally ridiculous out here. You know, they'll gripe about gun control over that shooting down there in Uvalde, but try to outlaw this and outlaw that. We're going to outlaw cars. They just know. ran through a crowd. Well, what about the idiot in Wisconsin that drove through the Christmas parade? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something else, but that whole police force down there 
at that school in Texas. They've got to relook in. A lot of them's got to go bye bye. Yeah. You know, you don't stand out there for an hour waiting to go in. I, I I still haven't figured that out yet. I haven't either. You know, I I mean, I've heard some people on the radio and TV trying to give excuses, but I'm thinking, well, I even had a guy. He was he's he is a cop that actually called in the station. He said, I'm sorry anyone's kids he goes if i lived across the street from it he's a retired cop now but he said they would have to shoot me while i'm going in or arrest exactly me I'm going out. i'm going he said i'm going in you know any they're standing i look at this way nothing. he goes i'm going in any officer there you're at you got called to school for a shooting it's an elementary school that means there's little kids in there yeah right if there's a shooter in there i'm going in you know, a bunch of them, all they'd had to do was go in. Yep. And I'm not saying the 19 kids and teachers that died would have been saved, but we would, we'd had it done faster and got the situation under control. Right. Because these other kids, we was talking on the show last night and uh, I guess one 10 year old girl played dead in there. Look at what she's got to live with, with in her mind for the rest of her life. Yeah. I mean, no kid should see what happened. Uh-uh. It's ridiculous. But that just goes to show when we got the liberals in charge, more of this type of stuff happens all the time. Well, this guy had, had lots of evidence. There was lots of evidence out there that he was this crazy. Yeah, he went around torturing and killing cats. They said he's got video of him in a back seat with a bag full of cats. He's bragging about torturing and killing. I mean, you don't. No. You that they say a lot of these these mass murders actually start off by torturing and killing animals. That's how they start. Yeah, Chad. A lot of them went against orders and went in, but it was an hour after they got there that they went in. Yeah, and he was cutting himself all over and taking pictures and everything. Yeah. You know, you know, he's there. His mother's in what, North Carolina or South Carolina, somewhere over there. Drug rehab or all on drugs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, oh, no, my, uh, my child never does anything wrong. Yeah, no, no adult. He supervision. wouldn't do that. Lady, you didn't keep up on your child. No. No. Yeah, I said basically no adult supervision. Yeah, that's right. That, that little girl had PTSD, Denise. That's exactly right. Yeah, she'll be, she'll have nightmares for the rest of her life. Yeah, it's. It's, it's sad. It's sad. But yet. Oh, Sleepy Joe could go down there and try to do console and do all this and that. He's close to the border. Why didn't he just go on down and take care of that? He's an idiot. Well, his security people went, no, no, we can't trust him down there. He might do something really good for the people. We can't have that. No, I can't have that. No. Like I said, I can't you know, name I can't name one thing he's done to help any American or anything for our country. I mean, I wish I could. I wish I was making it up, but there, right. there's absolutely nothing the guy's done has been right. No, that helps our country. No, helps the uh, people help of this country out. Now he, what we can say without a doubt, he's helping a lot of people from other countries. Oh yeah. Come on in. You know, we'll give you everything that our people work for, their tax dollars. We'll but give you it to you. But you know what? What we saw in Texas, this is going to be a it's going to be a daily occurrence before long, and I'll tell you why. They open these borders up. We have no idea who's coming in. We you know there are actual terrorists coming in. Oh yeah, they've we already captured that. What do you think they're going to do? Right. 
they're going to make they're going to make that thing look like nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already talking big groups coming in and yeah. all this and that. And later on. Yeah, they'll hit a, they'll hit a, foot, a baseball stadium or a football during a, a, a game when there's 75,000 there. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, it's just like, where on earth are we putting this one point, almost two million illegals yeah. that come across the country? Where are they staying at? All over the place. Yeah. But where are our tax tax dollars paying for these motel rooms, these houses, this whatever? Yeah. You know, there's always been a housing shortage. Now what's going on? Yeah. And they're trying to keep it quiet, too. Yeah, they are. Because they know what they're doing is wrong. Eighteen-year-old seven thousand work. Of they're going to buy eighteen-year-old seven thousand dollar work of guns to distract from the border. Hmm. But uh, yeah, the the border down there, and when we say the border, folks. It's just not the southern border. Right. It's affecting this entire country. They're going everywhere. Yeah, they're flying them and busting them all over. They are. Like I said, you know, you know, a bunch of terrorists got in. You know, oh, they yeah. got through, and you, they're gonna they're gonna go for bigger stuff. Right. Well, it's like Jason Jones giving out numbers, and he'll tell you, so many of them were captured. So many of them got away. Yeah. And then there's a bigger majority that came across that we don't even know about. Right. That didn't set sensors off or got over. That's where a lot of your terrorists. Yep. And bad, bad people are going to come in that way. You know, the cartel is smart. They'll let a few of them catch the ones with drugs. But the ones bringing the big drugs in. They get across somewhere else. Yeah, we are all border states. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. I mean, it's, you know, we live up in the Midwest, but could you imagine living down within, say, 50 miles of the border? Oh, no way. Oh. What about yeah. the farmers down there? Exactly. They're just tearing the crap out of everything. Right. The farmers, the ranchers. I mean, what's what's to stop them from just shooting the people as they come in? I, I don't know. I think about it. I do, too. If I was I a rancher down there, I would protect my property at That's all right. costs. You got every right to. That's right. I may have to buy a backhoe, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, Richie is currently in Arizona, not far from the border. Well, tell what Richie to be there? safe. Oh, he's working on his he's job. Working there? Yep. Made him move to Wisconsin to go to Arizona. Wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he goes, it's too cold up here. I'm going to Arizona to work. It's warmer. Yeah, yeah. and the recalls and the food processing plants. What? Did you even go over there? Yeah. Yeah. I actually went all the way to Lawrence and back. Lawrence? Yeah. Oh, that's where you had to go? Yeah. Ah. So. Yeah. You couldn't pick the roof, huh? Ruby's outside playing. They didn't, didn't think they could get him to stop playing for them to go over. Yeah. So, oh, really? Yeah, Lawrence Road is washed out pretty good. Mm-hmm. Lots have, of, it, have you guys got that much rain down there? Oh, yeah. yeah. We got probably, we're under flood warnings. Well, I've seen here. pictures of certain parts of southern Kansas City and all down around Overland Park and places like that. One guy was out in a canoe on the street. Oh, that doesn't surprise yeah, me. There's, I, there's and some I'm places like, that are bad. The Did lake, rain that the lake over here, it's got like a spillway, it overflow, and then it actually goes over the walk path. It was probably... Over the spillway and the walk, it's probably about a foot deep. I mean, it was rushing and gushing. Really? Yeah, I said if somebody was walking there, you know, you're going to get soaked trying to walk through it because it's, you know, 30 feet long at least. Can't jump over it. 
But yeah, if somebody's walking a little dog and they lose that, they'll they'll just get taken away. Oh, I know. Downstream. Yeah. yeah, we got rain, but I don't think it was quite that bad. Yeah, we got more coming in. I know we do. We're supposed to have some really weird weather tonight. So Yeah. We will wait and see. Our guest may be coming on. Oh, really? Yeah, he thought it was tomorrow. Oh. Because the the message I sent last night was tomorrow. Oh, well, you might as well be tomorrow. Oh. There's 20 minutes. So, so well, right. we can at least introduce him to everybody and see if they'd like to hear him again. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, I w- walked out. I got up to the gas station. And it was like, oh my God, 425. And it was yeah. 404 yesterday. Actually, it's yeah, 404. This morning it was 402. 404. Yeah, it was 402 actually up here at the BP. Did you get gas? No, oh, I don't okay. need it. That's I didn't a good go thing. Yeah. yeah. So 425. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. How did it go up 23 cents overnight? It's just going to get worse. It got, we got over Memorial Weekend, so the price had to go up. That's ridiculous. Oh, so. I know. Yeah, we're always Just under. imagine what it's going to be like by Independence Day. Hopefully, we'll ha- maybe we'll be independent by then. Oh, it would be great if we were, but I don't see that happening that soon. Yeah, it ain't going to happen. No. So no, it, it, this doesn't. Th- us being, us being depressed as far as d- dollars go, is part of the part of their plan. Oh yeah. To yeah, really they're gonna they do to take away our money. The more they want to control us. Yep. And their I mean, policies screw everything up, so they can fix it. Isn't that amazing? It is. It's amazing, actually. It's amazing how they get away with it. Mm-hmm. Demon Crats have been doing that forever. They're the ones cause all the problems, and then they're the ones that claim they can fix it. Right. Well, wow. it's just like last Wednesday, Benson had a elderly couple on there and everything from Florida. And he had been voting Democrat. He voted for Biden. I have no idea why. So he had voters remorse? He... Oh, did he have voter remorse? What do you think? I mean, I'd like he, to find somebody had, who actually did vote for him. He, but voted, like for, to say he what, voted for Trump. What did they actually when think? Trump they became doing? president, right? But because Trump and his tweets, he didn't like oh, a lot my, of those. And, you know, and he's 78 years old and stuff. And he goes, So we switched, voted for Biden. And a week after that, uh-uh. Well, Chris is down here, but no camera on. Oh. Yep. That's fine. We can talk to him without his camera. Okay, we'll bring him up. We can hear him. <laughs> hey, Chris. Hey, how we doing, guys? Sorry about that. I got my schedule all screwed up. I'm glad I saw the message come in. Yeah. Oh, well, you no probably problem. thought today was Monday, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I know I did. <laughs> tends to happen when you run such a hooky schedule like I do. <laughs> Believe me, I understand. And I'm glad you got to come on. Even if it's only for a little bit, we can at least introduce here. people to you. And, uh, you know, that way, next time you come on, they'll know who you are and want to hear right. more of what you have to say. So, Because I know you have a lot to say when it comes to uh, the paranormal as well as um, politics. <laughs> you, you have... You have um, you have opinions and you're willing to share. Yeah, it's got me in trouble throughout the years, but uh, but you know what? That's all, all of right. us have gotten when in you're trouble. Right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is this is Ron over here. Carl, can you say hi? Yep. Hi, Chris. And that's Carl. And, hey guys. Uh, and I know you know me already. And uh, but I remembered when I had you on at the beginning of the year that you had a lot of a lot of good things to say. So I thought that this might be a good forum for you. And uh, I made an announcement earlier that you missed out on. This is going to be the network that I'm going to be on um, June 20th. So, oh, cool. so my show will be, be video coming up here soon, which will make Frank Bennett very happy. He likes video. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> Frank's a good guy. We've had a lot of, we've had a lot of good talks, he and I, together. Yeah, he, he's a good guy. So what have you been working? I know you've had a lot of 
family things going on, and I'm sorry. Well, it happens, and it's uh, it's just one of those things, I guess you could say, that happens from time to time. Um, I took a step back from the paranormal about eight or nine months ago. Well, actually, I, I should say it, uh, I took a step back from the mainstream paranormal. Right. I'll see if I can get this thing to work here. If I do, then we'll get my camera on for you. Hey, there we go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you might uh, might be a little bit of a, a side view, but we at least got you running here. Um, I started. Uh, I, I went into seminars and, and things along those lines. Kind of took away back from the uh, the mainstream for a lot of different reasons. The biggest reasons were uh, uh, drama and all the other silly stuff that happens. But uh, also because I wanted to get back into research and development and. I wanted to spend a little bit more time uh, helping my friend Joel with his NICAM business uh, and uh, just kind of get back into the nitty gritty of things. Um, what kind plus, of business did you say? Uh, NICAM products. If you guys haven't visited NICAM, I encourage you to do it. It's the very first fully functional um, action camera night vision designed for the paranormal. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, we he he's been prototype. We've been prototyping this, but he's the he's the master behind it. All I do is promote it. Um, we've been prototyping this for almost four years. Oh wow! Uh, and now we've gotten to the point to where it's one of the second largest, third largest action cameras on the market. So a lot of people are mimicking it, but it originally is created by Joel Myers. Um, it has a lot of different operations. It's a full spectrum night vision camera, so you can get different views, different colors. Um, and we're coming out with a newer version of a camera that's going to be like your professional camera that you see and use all the time for movies and TV, mm -hmm. but it's designed specifically for you to plug in your phone and stream directly live wherever you want. Hmm. Wow. Uh, so it's going to have, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Right. It's going to have massive, massive quality. Um, if you need a tester, I'm volunteering. <laughs> well, we'll I, probably I, I end up leaving out using a couple of <laughs> testers. So I, I, I helped concentrate on uh, retooling that a little bit and talking to him in the background, spending some time in some seminars, uh, rewriting a book because I couldn't get the permissions to use specific things and going back into the uh, academic community because um, I got to tell you guys, when you're out there in the mainstream and you're filming anything and you're working with people that film that are big and small, it gets so tiring. It really does. Um, so I kind of took a break from all of that. Of course, my day job is in marketing, business, PR, and working for the good old United States of America when they contract me in. So uh, I got wrapped up into trying to rebuild that business a little bit, and that was tough enough with everything that's going on in America right now. I sure right. did. I know um, you had a lot of, a lot of things happening during the pandemic. That was not. Did not make you happy go lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a story behind that, and I can't tell a lot of it because I'm under uh, non-disclosure agreements. But uh, I worked in the state of Ohio from the beginning of SARS-CoV-2. Um, I was um, helping get the emails and the information from Amy Bruning to Mike DeWine, moving the uh, information from Washington, D.C., CDC to the right mailboxes, and making sure it all kind of worked behind the scenes. Along, Not just me. There were a lot of people doing it. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately... I also found out that um, there were a lot of things that uh, most people don't know about that wasn't exactly Truthful. accurate facts. Right. <laughs> we, um, the thing is, is anybody that's smart know there's a lot. <laughs> knows yeah. that we weren't being told the whole truth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, it wasn't the fault of a lot of the uh, people involved. Right. Um, it was the fault of the people above them. And also why you saw some of them from state to state retire uh, politely and walk away and say, well, I might consult, I might do other things because it, there was people I don't think have a realization of how politicians and politics is different than with the way the government should be ran. Right. So uh, there's a lot of ins and outs that uh, I wish I could share with you. In fact, I did on my radio station and guess what? I got shut out, shut down and, fired for it and I'm just now coming back um, because we got cut off the air. It was a big conversation at the time. In fact, I think Frank was on that call. Probably. Lori Johnson was on that call Ooh. and a couple other people. Yeah. And then I just, I finally gotten tired of it because they did some things I wasn't happy with and took away some things from me because I told them I wasn't going to keep quiet 
and I spouted off and they cut the radio station right off the bat and called me on the phone and said, Hey, you're not allowed to do that. We caught it all and, and uh, the whole nine yards. So <laughs> kind of a scary moment when you know the, the government's calling you on your home phone yeah, and saying right. you're busted. <laughs> Yeah, they don't like us telling the truth. Well, their their day I think is coming. Uh, some Payback, of them, yeah. Payback's a bitch. Mm -hmm. Some of them are. It's uh, yeah. It's kind of kind of amazing how at the beginning of all this, when uh, the new administration took over, I laid it out to everybody. I told them, hey, look, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. I knew all that. Uh, and uh, everybody's like, oh no, it's not. And where are we at right now? Yeah, I, I knew a disaster was going to hit. <laughs> yeah, I knew that um it's a disaster a day i mean pick pick one and right. now their biggest complaint on this monkeypox thing i've got it up on my computer right now believe it or not um, and come on guys monkeypox has been around almost as long as smallpox it's controllable sure right. it might get to the united states but they're going to squash it quickly so why and, what make the, a big deal and what does the cdc say oh one in ten cases is is deadly yeah I'm like <laughs> really and they know that they can actually isolate this and stop mm -hmm. it immediately. They know it. Right. We have the medicine for it. Mm -hmm. Right. And But the thing is, is I'm not going out to get my kids, tell my kids, hey, you need to be smallpox vaccinated. Right. Is, is this saying that the smallpox vaccine that I have is going to fight this? It, it is actually, it the same vaccine? It actually, yeah. But the, the thing the, is, it's 50 years. The smallpox <laughs> vaccinations that we all have is enough to fight monkeypox. But there's a very small chance that very, very small chance that you can still get it. Um, what they're not telling you is we have antivirals that can control the situation. And although monkeypox is not fully curable, it's like African pneumonia, which nobody ever heard of. I'm a victim of, by the way, I'm one of the seven that got it. Um, it is not only, though you may have it for the rest of your life, um, it is easily controllable. So um, uh, the odds of a monkeypox outbreak, the size of what they claim COVID-19 is, is yeah. it's just not yeah. right no. it's just the, it's just the latest fear factor that they're shoving that's right out. Yeah. it's a fear factor that they're putting out and making stories up about to scare the people out here mm -hmm. well you have to because how else are they going to win yeah right, they, right. how they, else they, are they going to get try to get total control policies, that's for sure and the <laughs> yeah. only way they can win is cheat and they're really good at that i will give the democrats credit for that they're very good at cheating Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I will tell you, if they cheat on this next election, though, th unfortunately, there'll be a war at this point. There will. Right. Well, the there thing will. Is, we'll have to. I mean, they, we don't have a choice. We can't live under this kind of crap. Yeah. Apparently, we're, they get, don't have we're getting so out. close to so. a upset war in this country, a civil war in this country that has never been seen before. Yeah. Yeah. If they keep it up. Pushing the right button. <laughs> yeah. They'll keep it up. They, they may not make it till the next election before they get thrown out. No. I, I think most of them will stay until the next election. The question is who's going to be after that because, uh, as I've told people a lot of times, we're, we're in a situation we've never been in before. Right. right. That started with almost with Donald because m only one other president in the history of America has made it four years and then dropped. Um, and there was circumstance behind that one. Um, so we have the first president technically in history that only made it four years. The odds of him being reelected are almost slim to none, but his candidates he's supporting, uh, will either way, if, mm -hmm. if we allow it to happen. Um, and I think Donald's even said that himself. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we, what we do know is that at that, here's the easiest way to say it. What we do know is at two thirty AM at night. I went to sleep with the man that had a lead of over 500,000 names. Yeah. Right. I woke up an hour I and a half later thing. and he was behind by 180,000. Right. That's mathematically impossible. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I said the same thing and they actually had a, a an actual mathematician got on there not a couple days after that. He said the odds of that happening are getting bit by a sh not only by a shark but by the same shark in the same week. Right. Twice. Yeah. Not by random shark. The exact same shark twice in the same week. In I an mean, ocean where we got there better are thousands odds of, of that. sharks. 
Right. <laughs> well, it's me, me and Cameron were doing impossible. a live world record at that time during that election. It's impossible that for that to happen. And Cameron went to bed, like I said, about 2.30. Yep. And stuff. And he goes, man, we got this. No problem. Trump's president. Yep. And, you know, going in and everything. And I'm sitting there live talking and kept bringing it up on the show and showing yeah, you were having it. And all problem. of a sudden I'm looking going, what the hell? We yep. had 92%. In, yep. but yet Biden won it. Yep. No, that can't there happen. No way. There is no mathematical no way, yeah, way so that could happen. It, it was totally impossible in the first place. But even if yeah. you take their word for it that time, let's let's look at the obvious after that. Okay, less than four months after that, he removes the pipeline from the United States of America, which removed all the negotiated rights that allowed us to have a fuel cost so low in the first place. Yep. Right. They don't address that, even though it is in writing and you can find it. They don't address that at all. Right. But they say, oh, it's because of the world, blah, 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 which is total crap and not at the same right. time. Exactly. And our fuel cost goes through the roof. On top of that, they remove all of the tariffs that regulated us making money and lowering prices and flooded a market with shipments, knowing that we didn't have people to bring the shipments in, causing rotten food shortages and all kinds of other things that in, increased our, our uh, cost of living. And then they raised property tax. Yeah. yeah. It's all done on purpose. <laughs> um, I mean, I it's, mean, it's obvious it's at it. this point that nobody wants them in. I know people keep saying, oh, yes, they do. Who? Everybody Who? I talk to can't stand them. No, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> you know, in, it's so hard to find a person right now that says they voted for Biden. Extremely hard. <laughs> You know, like I said, and I'm like, right, 80 fine. some million of you did somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You may have been in the grave and voted. Oh, yeah. You know, but hey, somebody's well, I, met some, I, I have some friends that are uh, that even today are firm Biden believers and they'll come back and they'll blame things on everybody else. Right. Uh, and I still don't understand, that, by the way. Not everything is Trump's fault. Not everything is uh, Obama's fault. Not everything was president before Obama's. This is an escalating situation, but it's an escalating situation that could have been avoided if they wouldn't have just wanted to say face to Donald Trump. Right. Um, so they cut everything off. And what happens when you when one president comes in and makes changes that are working, even in a terrible situation like COVID-19? And then you just remove all that shit immediately. Excuse my term. I shouldn't say I that. But you just remove all that immediately. What did you expect to happen? Right. <laughs> um, you know what? We got a few minutes left. Can you tell everybody where they can find you? Yep. Yeah, you can always look me up on Facebook right now. I've got my old radio show, which is about to rebroadcast, by the way. We're starting a whole new situation, um, including a, a YouTube show that uh, I'm going to be promoting. You're going to love the name of that, by the way. It's called Total Bullshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and the radio show is starting back up, not this month, but next month, all across the state of Ohio. Uh, it's called Paranormal Truth and Reality. Um, we're going to go beyond the average this time around. And then stay tuned because you will see me on six episodes of a television show next year. What television uh, show is that? Do you know, know the name? Can you share the name of it? I can't at this point. I wish okay. I could. Uh, it we is know. new. Uh, it will be yeah. on Discovery Stream. I know I only signed on for six episodes. I did five so far. I don't know if I'll do the sixth one yet or not. But uh, it is unique. It's it's a little bit different. It's still got the same feel. But uh, um, well, I can't wait to, to hear be, about it. Yeah, expect me to be the... Um, realist that i am if you've ever paid attention to me online um and uh hopefully i'll have a book out next year hopefully fingers crossed yes. well, you know what we're gonna have to get you back on here yeah. and so that we can talk more because i think that you would enjoy this forum and uh yeah i'd love to i apologize guys like for some reason in my calendar it was set for tomorrow and i had everything it's... prepped well <laughs> you want to know why because yesterday when i sent the message it was tomorrow you know, so I said yes yesterday. I said tomorrow, I, and when you read it, it was probably this morning, which then is tomorrow. I kept thinking today was Monday. So I mean, all right. day. But yeah. anytime you want me on, just let me know, and I'll be glad to come back. If you want to come back next week, you, you yeah, know, if you, you want, want to put it on your calendar for next for, week for yeah. Tuesday at five. Next yeah, week. I can do Tuesday that. At five p.m. There you go. You guys maybe I, can, uh, maybe I can get Mr. Myers to pop his head in and say hi in the process. 
Perfect. That'd work. Remember, That'd it's work. Central Time. And so, yeah. everybody, you know, you can find, yeah, you, find me here with Ron every Tuesday night. And on June 20th, you can find me here on the Bill of Rights Network, at least on the Bill of Rights Network, on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Central. Right. And check out the Bill of Rights Network on Facebook and on uh, Twitter. Everywhere over there, we have a list of all our shows that we do over here. Also, check out Things Network, their lineup, where we're broadcasting live at. Also, Temple of the Phoenix Rising Entertainment, where we broadcast live the Paranormal Nation radio show. So, so check all those shows out. And, folks, we got a show over on Things coming up right after us. So we got to say goodbye. We'll talk to you all later. Have a good Bye, night. Bye, guys.